Hi, my name is Aniko Planik, and I am a junior at Downers Grove North, and today I'm going to be talking about the relationship between disease and demographics. So my focus of this project, which I started in October to November, and I worked on all the way to February, was basically looking at some social determinants of health, which I'm going to talk about later, and basically how they all intersect and affect how long someone lives, how long that, or how much they're going to be susceptible to catching a disease, things like that. My method was researching current pandemics, historic pandemics, and I did look a bit at vulnerable populations. And my hypothesis was if people of certain demographics are equally educated and seek treatment or regular medical attention, then the chances of them catching widespread disease will become less likely. And I do talk about the education part a little more at the end of it, um, end of this part, but yeah. So social determinants of health, which I mentioned earlier, anything from location to your socioeconomic status, your access to medical care, your age, your gen genetics or medical history, your lifestyle, and all these things kind of intersect and they all affect each other in someone's, you know, life health-wise. So I'm not going to be able to talk about all of them. I picked, I think, two to talk about. And so I looked at the healthiest and unhealthiest countries in general. And as you can see, North America, Western Europe, and Australia are generally in the green. And then in, like, a lot of red is Africa. And then Asia tends to be more orange and yellow. And then on this map, which is another kind of version of a health map, it is an infant mortality rate map, which basically says that um, out of 1,000 children on this map, um, how many would not make it to the age of five. And as you can see, you can definitely see that green stays generally green. Or green and yellow stays generally green and yellow, and red state tends to stay red. So obviously Africa is more at risk for, uh, you know, bad mortality rates, things like that. And you can see this correlation continue with the access to medical care these people have globally. Um, this is how many countries with that have like less than one doctor per thousand people, which is generally really low. As you can see, you can see a trend already with the red to the orange. And then, again, the red area is still in the same area. It, and this basically shows how many nurses or midwives um, per, if there's less than one per 1,000 people there. So as you can see, there's definitely, you know, correspondence between accessibility to medical care and how long you're expected to live and how long, you know, you're expected to live healthily. And basically, when I looked at all of them, um, all of the, you know, socioeconomic, location, all these social determinants in a bigger picture. I thought that one of the best ways to educate people about this topic was for my prototype to be um, an educational resource. And I thought that kids learn best when they are able to learn um, interactively. And so basically I put together like a quiz and it'd be more like, you know, a hands-on museum. And basically you can choose, I don't know, I wouldn't say this for like the kids, but like, I don't know, maybe like a character or something to make up, right? They would be like, oh, they work as a teacher, like medical care, somewhat accessible, things like that. You can put all this together and then it will tell you like how, like how um, at risk you are, how at risk your character is per se. And I thought that was like something that would be, you know, better for education and educating people about this, all the intersectionality all these factors have. And obviously it's a very like low tech um, version of what I you know, would like it to be, but yeah. And then, of course, like, I can't talk about diseases and global health and things like that, not mention, like, the chances of a pandemic happening. Um, and since that, my social determinant project was from, I don't know, last fall to, like, January, February, I want to talk about more about research that's come up now. And so the new age pandemic, which is a very dangerous version of like a historic pand pandemic basically is that now we have international transportation, we have global warming, which, you know, splits up our funds from medical disasters to like natural disaster disasters, things like that. And then global warming also causes like um, disease carrying organisms, habitats to expand. And then of course, our increasing population that is ever increasing um, puts us at more at risk for a huge pandemic that you know because we know that people that live in very dense areas if there's a lot of people in an area they are more at risk for spreading a huge pandemic and then the risk economic which is why this is a new age thing because our economy is so inter intertwined with our world 
Um, so SARS, Ebola, H1N1, um, all caused from fo- anywhere from $40 billion to a $55 billion loss, and those were over one to two years. And so those were some of the more recent um, epidemics and pandemics that I saw. And then um, population-wise, um, one of the bigger ones that I found was in 1918, the Spanish influenza caused, cost the lives of 50 million people. And an article which I which was written in, I think, September of last year. So before all this happened, they were like, it's coming, you know, there's a pandemic coming. And they expected that 50, they projected that 50, 80, if, sorry, if if a pandemic happened at the same scale as the Spanish influenza, that 50 to 80 million people would die, and that would cause a $3 trillion loss. So the probability of a pandemic, and is it as bad as that article predicted? And so this research is taken from the past five months or so, because obviously there's not much else I could research about COVID-19. Um, economic, our economy is expected to go, you know, further down than it already is. And the UN predicted that there'd be a one to $2 trillion loss in like just this year alone. And so that's huge compared to what SARS, Ebola, and H1N1 caused. Obviously it's on a, you know, more worldwide scale but yeah population wise which i checked yesterday um because i thought i was going to film yesterday but i didn't anyway um there were three million cases as of yesterday and they were about 260,000 16,000 deaths so it's not as so economic wise it is pretty close to what the article predicted but population wise thankfully it's not on the same scale as the article predicted so that's basically all the research I had for that that I, you know, wanted to present today um, in a very condensed format. And I want to talk about the mentorship a bit because I really appreciate this program. Um, Miss Renee Dubois was my mentor, and I really, probably not pronouncing that right because I don't take French, but I really appreciated her help. She um, taught me how to make sure my research was concise and more um, general questions and things like that about making sure my research was adequate and good for, um, to present to you guys. And yeah, I know other kids in my class really liked having their mentors being very helpful in like specific regions and things like that. But yeah, I think whether your topic is very general like mine was or very specific like other people's is, um, other people's was, I think that this mentorship is great because we don't have, you know, iScore is not going to have access to like a, you know, someone who's very deep in their field. But I do think that making that, you know, these people accessible to us and able to help us into researching what we're interested in is a very good program that I'm really appreciative of. So I do appreciate the program. And I like that I was able to, you know, ask her anything I wanted to ask, ask, you know, about research, ask about my topic, ask about possible prototypes I could design. So I really appreciate that. These are my sources I use in this specific version of my project. Um, yeah, I want to say thank you guys for letting me present, even if it's just my bedroom, but I really appreciate being able to, you know, put all my research together and, you know, let it be seen by the world. So thank you guys very much for this opportunity and yeah, have a good day.